Let's go to Mark chapter number 10. Mark 10. Mark chapter number 10. Over the summer, my wife and I opened up a business for the first time together working. She's a designer, interior designer. We did a cabin in Georgia together, and she did her good work in Georgia. We did her good work. Clap it up for her, the brilliant mind and own space. Where I have rental properties that I normally I do, and this time this was her project, and it was fun to do. So we both are peaches, Georgia peaches and Florida oranges. We, we share both states. We love Georgia. Mark 10, 46 through 52, it says this. Get there. If you're not there, please get there. I don't know how you'll get there, but get there if you can. Mark 10, 46 through 52. This is maybe for some, maybe for others who are watching online for the first time, second time, third time, that may not be as familiar with Christian. Um, this is a passage of scripture about a blind man who encounters Jesus on the side of the road and he screams out to get Jesus' attention. In Mark 10, verse 46, it says, Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man. Somebody say blind man. Y'all got to talk back to me. I, I need y'all to talk so I can understand. I, I need to know you're here. Somebody say blind man. blind man. There you go. Say it again. Say blind man. Blind man. A blind man. Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. He was sitting there begging. When he heard him, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus son of David, very powerful, because most people did not know son of David was a messianic title, that he was blind, but he had revelation. Y'all missed it. He was blind, but he had revelation. Let me say it again, because I've been gone six weeks, y'all ain't catching. You could be in a season where you don't see but that doesn't mean that you should be in a season where things aren't being revealed. How many of you are in that season where you don't know exactly what to know, but you're being revealed certain things, even though you're in a blind season, that I don't know what God is doing, but I just saw him do something over here. I'm not fully clear on it, but I'm sensing something. I'm, I'm feeling something. If you're feeling that in the chat, put, yes, I am, I am, I am, I am. When he heard that, Jesus and Nazareth, he said, have mercy on me. We don't need grace, we need mercy. Grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. Mercy is God withholding what you do deserve. And then what happens is that whenever you decide to make a change, people start to rebuke you and tell you to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on the feet. He's calling you, throw his cloak aside. He jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. And Jesus asked him a question, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, Rabbi, I just want to see. And it was powerful that they sang this song without any text messages going forth, back and forth. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, because I want to see you. I want to talk for just 25 minutes today as I'm working my way back, breaking the protocol. I want to talk about breaking the protocol protocol is an established criteria or rules that govern conduct for each person. Protocol is something that is obvious or maybe not obvious. Protocol would be in this moment, no one should be screaming out, I love that song. That, that would not be in protocol. Protocol would be like, um, uh, everybody's seated so I, I can't be in this moment doing jumping jacks because that's not protocol. Pro protocol 
is there's a certain way that I, I must address. A protocol is there's a certain time that certain things happen. And pro protocol is there's a certain way I must come in. And just because it's not my preference, if it's the protocol, you got to follow the protocol. Right? If you're, if you're a speaker and you get invited to a place and you're like, man, I like to wear my ripped jeans and their protocol is everybody's in a suit, you don't get to choose your preference over the protocol. The protocol is what sets the standard. This is how we want you to communicate to our house. This is how we want you to articulate to our house. And so protocol is important. So when Jesus is passing by and this man is on the side of the road, they're asking him to follow protocol. They're telling him, listen, you see Jesus coming. It is improper for you to start screaming because Jesus is walking by. We need you to be in protocol. And let me tell you something, protocol is an absolute must. But on the other hand, if you are boxed in by rules, you'll miss out on an encounter because your rules will stop you from pursuing something greater than your rules. And he says, blind Bartimaeus is on the side of the road and we are seeing him, a large crowd following Jesus. And this large crowd is following him because of what he's done. Don't get it twisted. People will follow you because of what you do, not because of who you are. Come on, church. Somebody say amen. People will follow you because of what you do, not because of who you are. They all were following Jesus because of what he did, not because of who they, oh, if you follow this guy, he does miracles. And everybody gathered on the side of the road because now we want to be a part of seeing this miraculous guy do a miracle and some just wanted to be spectators, but blind Bartimaeus, who does not know Jesus, who's used to being rejected by people, is taking a chance to break the protocol and see if I do something different, will God give me something different? If I decide to stop eating for three days and turn my plate over and say, God, I'm gonna give you the source of what I enjoy, my baby back ribs, my shrimp, my, my my grits and all my type of stuff and I'm going to give you three days where I can see you even though I don't feel you. I'm going to believe that if I break my routine you're going to do something greater than my routine can ever give me. And blind Bartimaeus is standing on the side of the road and they are sitting there saying to him um 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 you, you know that Jesus is coming and he don't like to talk to people like you. Because people will always try to make you feel like you don't qualify for what God's encounter is going to be. Now, you got to remember, society says if you're blind, you're less than. The reason why you're blind is because someone sinned in your family. The reason why you're in this condition is because of what someone else did. And now you're blind. You're treated as an outcast. You live off the generosity of other people. And when people are generous to you, they can treat you any type of way because they know they're the ones that feed you. And so all of a sudden, he recognizes that I'm going to be in this condition forever unless I do something that breaks the protocol and gets me out of what I'm in, I'm going to be forced to obey the request of other people. So he says, um, I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, uh, uh, who's coming by? This man named Jesus. I've heard of him. Even though I haven't seen him, I've heard of him. Which lets me know sometimes my eyes don't need to know, but my ears need to hear. Sometimes my eyes don't need to know, but my ears need to hear. And I want to prophesy to some of you that you don't need to see another season. You need to hear it first. Because most of us are trying to see God do something, and God ain't trying to let you see anything. He's trying to get you to hear something. Would you just take a second, lift your hands, and say, Lord, let me hear you. Say it with some authority. Say, Lord, let me hear you. I don't feel you. Say, Lord, let me hear you. No, no, no. I need you to say it with your mask on. I know it's uncomfortable. Say, Lord, let me hear you. See, the difference between you staying blind and you being able to see is you being able to hear. He was able to hear what move he was supposed to make to position himself in the right place. You need to hear. You need to hear that your job's going to let you go before it lets you go. 
You don't need to see it. You need to hear that your body's going to act up before you see it act up. You need to hear what's going to happen before it happens because if you don't hear it, you're going to miss it. You don't always got to see everything. You got to hear some things. And I need you to pray, Lord, let me hear it. I was... I was dealing with this thing. I was, I was, I was received a, a message from somebody that said, I'm going to come visit you, and, and I'm going to come visit you. This was a while ago, and, and, and last night I, I had this weird dream. My wife touched me. She, she said, I, I just heard you wrestling in your dream, and in this dream, the person that I, I saw, the, the person I saw, the, this person I saw, a, a gentleman, strong gentleman, he, he came and gave me a handshake, and when he gave me a handshake, the Lord, and he smiled, beautiful smile, trustworthy smile, and in the dream, the Lord said, if he shakes your hand, and smiles don't trust anything he says so now when when this person comes in real life I didn't see him but I heard and because I heard I know how to operate and if you don't know how to hear you're gonna be seeing things but still be blind because many of us in this room we can see 2020 but we're still blind we don't have the eyes to discern we don't have the eyes to see beyond what we see and some of you have fallen in love with things that you thought you should have fallen in love with because your eyes didn't show you what you should have really saw somebody say Lord help me see now he says Lord son of David he says Lord son of David son of David his eyes didn't work but he spent time listening I want you to spend some time listening I want you to spend some time listening I want you to spend some time listening. You've done a lot of talking in this time. You've done a lot of posting in this time. You've done a lot of writing in this time. You've done a lot of tweeting in this time. But I want to ask you a question. How long have you spent listening? How long have you just sat there and spent? No, I didn't ask what your mentor said. I didn't ask what your BFF said. I didn't ask what your mentee said. How long have you just sat there and just listened? And you're sitting there saying, well, what is, what is, what are you doing? I ain't doing much. I'm just listening. Listening. Why are you listening? Because the next season of my life is not going to be dependent upon what I see. Because you can fool me with, your, with what I see, but you can't fool me with what I hear. I need to be able to hear what the Lord is saying. And I cannot do that by trusting my eyes. How many of you have ever looked at somebody that looked really, really good and then they took off the 21 inch lace hair? They took off the eyelashes. They took off the makeup they took off all these things or they took off the sewing wave cap that they had on their head they took off the sewing beard that they had and you realize all of a sudden your eyes fell in love with an illusion your eyes fell in love with a filter and I need your eyes not to be filtered in this season I need you not to fall in love with something that's been artificial that you don't even know what it really is I need eyes to be able to see and I need ears to be able to hear and when I need to be able to know when Jesus is passing by I don't want to be in another church service but I want to be where Jesus is and if Jesus is with three people with a tambourine that's where I want to be because a lot of us are chasing what looks like Jesus but we're blind on the side of the road and a man that was blind that didn't go to Sunday school that didn't have High, that did not take theology classes, that did not take systematic theology classes, that did not know how to participate in worship, didn't know how to lift his hands, didn't know when to dance, didn't know how to do the praise dance. He was wise enough to hear when Jesus is passing by. You don't need, you don't need what you think you need. You need what you think you don't need. Let me say it again. You don't need what you think you need. You need what you think you don't need. And he had the ability to discern when God God is moving and you know how to get your next level be being able to discern when God is moving no 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 don't wait till he's already moved to jump in you need to be ahead of the game just like people who jump in on these Bitcoin if you jump in on Bitcoin when it's already up you already lost you got to be able to sense the timing so that you know when to open you got to be able to sense the timing and some of you miss what God had for you not because it wasn't God but because you jumped in the wrong season
season. You jumped in the water when the water wasn't stirred. You jumped in when God told you to jump 30 minutes ago, but you waited 30 minutes and then you jumped. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. And some of you are at the brink of your next level, but you're following protocol. And protocol will bound you up. It will tell you that you can't do this. It will tell you not to do that. But I'm trying to get you to break protocol, which says I'm going to do something different so I can see something different. And if you're tired of seeing the same thing, then maybe you need to do something different so you can see something different. You can experience something different because God is doing something different. And he begins to say, bring it up. Let's go home. He says this. He says, sometimes faith is blind and you have to feel your way through. You won't know what every season is about, but you got to learn how to feel your way through. You may not know how some seasons of marriage is, but you got to learn how to feel your way through. We've never been here before. I don't know how it is to lose a mother. I don't know how it is to lose a father, but I got to feel my way through. I don't know how it is to lose a child, but I got to learn how to feel my way through. I don't know how it is to lose my job, but I got to learn how to feel my way through. I don't know how this season's going to be. I feel the Holy Spirit. I don't know how this season's going to be, but I got to learn how to feel my way through. I don't know how it is to be sick in your body, but I got to learn how to feel my way through. I don't know how it is to be divorce, but I got to learn how to feel my way through. I don't know how it is to be by myself, but I got to feel my way through. I don't know how it is to take care of aging parents, but I got to learn how to feel my way through. But while I'm feeling my way through, I can't lose my faith while I'm feeling. I got to believe that God, every step that I take, you got to be with me. Because if you're not with me, I'm going to lose myself. If you're not with me, I'm going to drown in the sea of being blind. I don't want to be beggars. I don't want to be on the side of the road leaning on everybody's revelation mentorship is good we all need mentors I need a mentor you need a mentor but y'all have made mentors into idols you need to learn how to hear from God for yourself every step you take you gotta check with somebody baby I need to check with my mentors and I believe in checking with them but after they tell me a thing I'm going to God for myself because I need to know God are you authorizing this are you saying yes to this are you saying no to this because my feelings will make me make decisions decisions that are not right but if I hear from you if I, I feel the Holy Spirit if I hear from you God I know I will make the right decision if I hear from you I know I'll be going in the right direction and some of you have made idols out of voices as opposed to saying God I'm going to stop trying to see everything and I'm going to start trying to hear everything and I'm going to say Lord what I don't know I pray you teach me and what I don't know I I pray you send me because everything that I need is already around me and if it isn't around me you're gonna send it to me and if I don't know it when I meet it my heart will begin to leap because I know that you are the connect I'm trying to tell you how to know when you meet somebody that is destined for you there'll be a baby on the inside of you that will start to leap it'll be like y'all known each other forever and I don't know you all this time I ain't done a credit check. I ain't done a background check. But you speak to my baby. And when I hear you talk, my baby begins to jump. My baby begins to say, that's the voice that I need for my life. That's the voice that I need to follow for my life. I know you're following everybody else. I know you're going after everybody else. But I'm following the baby that makes my baby jump. I need that voice that when they step in the room, they say a word. Oh, there it is. They say a word and something shifts on the inside of me. You could be broken, busted, and disgusted, but when God sends you the right voice, it will open up your eyes to see things that you never saw before. Lift your hands and say, Lord, help me to see. Lord, help me to see. I need you to say it like prophetically. Lord, help me to see because you're missing out on what you need. You're looking for somebody with the accolades, but what God God is sending you is someone to stir up the baby on the inside of you to tell you that baby is alive and it needs to go and you cannot stay where you are because you're gonna lose yeah, yeah yeah come on Gerald and so here's what happens he started touching stuff because when you're blind 
you start to depend on other things to help you get better. Yeah, when you're blind, you start to depend on other things to get you to get better. You know, when people walk out, when your life feels like it's broken, you start to depend on other things to get stronger. You start to get wiser now because you stop depending on your eyes. I needed my eyes until I didn't have my eyes. And then I started recognizing I can depend on my ears. I can depend on my hands. I can depend on my feet. Lord, strip me of everything that I've been depending on and let me depend on other things that I've been neglecting because I got eyes you tapped into another relationship with God because your eyes were taken from you you tapped into a deeper level of consecration because your eyes were taken from you and some of you lost some people in this season and some of us will continue to lose people in this season but you gotta tap in to a part of you that's not natural that's supernatural you gotta be able to see things that others cannot see I see depression on you. How do you see that? Because I'm being able to feel by the Spirit of God. I'm not looking at your eyes. I know you said you're blessed. I know you said you're doing well. But something on the inside of me tells me you're not doing well. I don't care how good you sing. I don't care how loud you praise. I don't care how loud you dance. It's an empty shout. It's an empty praise because you're blind and you don't know how to make it out. But I'm telling telling you you're gonna have to learn how to do something different so that you can get something different because your self-conscience can imprison your conscience what what if I what if I tell him that God I need you to heal me, and he rejects me. What if I say to him, Master, touch me, and he doesn't touch me? Can you imagine how much anxiety he had to have to go to Jesus, this superstar of a figure, this bright and morning star, and trust him with his vulnerability? But here's the question. What if he never asked? Some of you are happy being blind because you like the compassion you get. You like the sympathy you get. Have mercy on me, I'm blind. Have mercy on me, I'm blind. The reason why I'm the way I am is because I'm blind and everybody looks over me and everybody passes over me, everybody treats me bad. That, that's why I'm where I'm at. It ain't got nothing to do with my choice. It's got to do with the prison that I put myself in because I build these things in my heart to convince me that being where I am is acceptable. I make all these rational excuses about why I can't touch Jesus. And despite all the rumors to sort out in my head, I realize that I only got a moment to touch a man I'll never meet. And I got to seize my moment. You got to seize your moment. Y'all ready for this? You have an anointing to break yokes or you have an anointing to build them. You have an anointing to break yokes or you have an anointing to build them. And some of you, the only reason why you're in the yokes that you're in is not because the devil, you built them yourself. While you're over here binding the yokes and binding the devil, you need to bind yourself. I built this pit. I built this ditch. Take the language out. Take the ownership. It's not Satan. 
it's not the devil that did this to me. I did this to myself. It's not the enemy that causes me to feel like this. It's me repeating things over my life that I don't have any business repeating. It's me saying things over myself that I don't have any business saying. It's me regurgitating things over my life that I don't have to regurgitate. I don't have to say these things to myself and I don't have to believe these things over myself. I've got to trust the word of the Lord over my life. And this is the word that I live on. This is the word that I hang on. If God God, let me live another day. My life still has a purpose and it still has a plan and it still has a meaning. And even if it's nasty, even if it's ugly, even if it's not in the best place, even if it's not in the happiest place, he left me on the side of the road and maybe he didn't come to the road to help everybody else. Maybe he came to the road to help me. And in my last four minutes and 26 seconds, and I'm done because I want to be on time. Jesus tells him, it's in the text. He says this to him. Take your cloak. His cloak was his security blanket. Give me your blanket. What's been keeping you blind? is your security. Y'all don't know how good that is. What's been holding you blind is your security blanket. I want it. I want the thing that makes you feel comfortable to cuddle yourself to sleep. I want it. I want the thing that makes you feel anesthetize your pain. I want it. I want the thing that you utilize to run away from your issues. I want it. I want that security blanket that you're using to feel yourself, make yourself feel better. I want it. I want that to go, Lord, so you mean you're not just going to heal me and I'm going to be free? Yeah, I'm going to heal you, but I want your security blanket because if I heal you, you'll still go back to your security blanket. I want you to be healed without the need to go back. I want you to be healed without the need of the crutches. I want you to be healed and I want you to turn in something that you build a long stronghold with. I want you to turn in something that you build a tie with. I want you to turn in that relationship. I need you to give it to me. Because I want to know do you want your healing or do you want your blanket? You can't want both. If you're going to live this life of faith in this next season, you're going to have to get rid of your blanket. Get rid of your blanket. You call him for everything. Give me your blanket. We went to see this holistic doctor. And she said, let me look at you. And she said to me, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff, but that was true. But the one thing that stood out to me the most was she said these words. She said, I see your central nervous system. She says, you're stressed. I said, Lady, what you talking about? I just came off of four weeks of vacation. She said, I don't care where you've been. Your eyes tell me you're stressed. I said, what you mean? She said, if you keep stressing, you're going to have a stroke. You know why? Because I learned how to work through stress. And at that moment, God said, the things you can't fix, when will you stop trying to strategize and just give them to me? You've been doing this for 13 years and you've never given me a blanket. So PDSJ, can you hand me what you can't deal with, with your intellect? My 
my question to you this morning is I can look in your eyes and see you're blind. You got money, but you're blind. You got married, but you're still blind. You're a beggar on the side of the road, spending all your days posting that someone would recognize you. Beggar. Spending all your days trying to prove to people who don't care you made it. Beggar. Because when Jesus touched you, you give those things back that used to matter because they don't matter no more. If you feel God talking to you, would you stand? It's not everybody. Online, give us a hand emoji. We've got security blankets we lean on and we need to learn how to trade them in for who you are. Please. We got some blind spots. Would you help us see? Please. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Help us to see. Give me eyes to see I need eyes to see for my wife eyes to see for my children eyes to see for my business eyes to see for my church eyes to see for my own life give me eyes to see in the year King Uzziah died I saw the Lord May your Uzziah die so you can see the Lord. Father, help us. Have mercy upon us. Help my ears to hear you. In the name of Jesus. Now, I know during worship and praise, they asked you to praise the Lord, and you did it because they told you to. Or you did it out of the sincerity of your heart. But I, I want you to give God a down payment of praise for what's coming to you next. Whew. No, 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 I said I want you to give God a shout of praise for what's coming to you next. Father, do it in the name of Jesus. Father, do it in the name of Jesus. Come on, I said open up your mouth and give the Lord a pure praise. Out of your belly. Out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly, even when you're watching online, out of your belly, out of your lips, 
out of the flowing of your heart. What are you doing? I'm making a sound to God. God processes what I say, not what I think. I need to make a sound to the Most High. A sound, a sound, a sound. I believe, God, that there's something greater coming. There's something greater coming. There's something greater. There's something deeper coming. There's something deeper coming. There's something deeper coming. With the clapping of my hands, with the lifting of my heart. Listen, I want to tell you this as a person that I believe. <laughs> I want to tell you, when I said this, this is what I saw. When I told you to clap your hands and, and, that, and this and this and that, what I, what I saw was people preparing for, for something great. Right? I saw people clapping because we're preparing for something good. But mark my words. Some of you are clapping and preparing for what God is going to prepare you for. Because I'm telling you, the winds that may come and blow may not be what you want. But your connection to God will sustain you in it. See, you might be looking at me and say, well, why do I pray? Well, if you don't pray, you'll go through things and you won't be able to sustain yourself. But if you do pray, like these next three days at 7 p.m. live in person or online, you'll be able to sustain yourself when they do come. So even though it will make everybody else crazy, you'll be able to walk through it. Even though the rain may get you wet, it won't get you sick. We all got wet, but they got sick and I didn't because they prepared me. So now I want you to give God a prophetic declaration that God prepare my heart, prepare my soul, prepare my mind, prepare my body. I want to receive everything you have for me. God, if it's bad, stand with me. If it's not what I expected, stand with me. If I get a text message that ruins my day, stand with me. If I get a call that ruins my life, stand with me. If I get a voice voicemail that shapes the trajectory of my future stand with me come on open up your mouth and say it come on open up your mouth and say it come on open up your mouth and say it come on open up your mouth and say it this is the labor room this is where you give birth to that which God is doing hey! come on open up your mouth and give it to God Give it to God. Give it to God. Give your cloak to God. Give your cloak to God. God, here it is. 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 I open it to you. I offer it to you. I surrender it to you. I submit it to you. Let it be so. In the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands if you receive that. Come on, there's fresh oil in this place for you. Come on, there's fresh oil for you. Come on, I said there's fresh oil for you. There's fresh oil for you. You got enough oil to finish this. You got enough oil to finish this. Come on, look at me. You got enough oil to finish this. You got enough oil. I came back to tell you. You got enough oil to finish this. You got enough grace on your life to finish what God started. He that began a good work is faithful and just to complete it until the return of our Lord and Savior. Whatever God began, he's responsible to finish. And your eyes will not close until the Lord brings to pass that which is in your heart. No sickness, no disease, no infirmity, no cancer, no trying, no plan of the wicked one shall stop the assignment of God over your life. You shall feel your way into destiny. You shall hear your way into the promises of God. You're going to 
going to fight. You're 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 going to fight. Girl, you going to fight. You going to fight to sing. You going to fight to worship. You going to fight to lift your hands. You going to fight to stand. But your blanket is in the hands of God. It's not in man's hands anymore. It's not in the approval of people anymore. It's in this longing relationship that can only come from God and God alone. It can only come from God when doctors don't know what to do the spirit of God will give you wisdom on what it is you need to do to care for you it is so it is so clap your hands take your seats in the presence of God